Hey, good morning. Let's everybody find a seat. Monica's fan club was yelling already. Her sister is here, which is the main member of the fam, fan club, but she's quieter than some of the French people. <laughs> Anyhow, up next is uh, Monica Wagner. She... <laughs> Hold your applause till the end. She is part of our key team in REMA Germany and REMA Europe as Michelle and I took on more responsibility. She took on more responsibility and that has helped us greatly. And uh, so you're in for a treat this morning. She is a German national, a Ramey USA grad, lives in Bonn, Germany, the same city as quite a, who else is here from Bonn this morning? Oh, you're quiet. You're gonna let the French, how do you? <laughs> All right, let's give Monica a warm welcome this morning. Monica. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Who understood that one? <laughs> I just said a wonderful good morning to everybody. I'm glad to be here with you. And I, I followed already in the back room what a fantastic message you had first hour. And we're just gonna go moving forward in the second hour like that. I hope you can understand my weird German accent. Can you? Okay. <laughs> if not, we are exposing you to the world right now, right? <laughs> so I hope you can follow it. If not, just wave really hard and say, what did you say? I don't get it. <laughs> Good. I want to talk to you this morning about some interesting things in Ephesians chapter 4. And I come to this point where I realized in my life that if we are not working together, and if we are not coming together as a part in the body of Christ, then we're having a real issue with each other. And, and you know, in being a part of Rema Europe and, and really working with all the schools, that's why you hear all the cheering, they are really from the different campuses in the different nation in Europe. We are, we are having a, a real situation if you really look at statistics. We have only 3.5% born-again believers in Europe of 750 million people. That's really a sad statistic if you look at that. You know, I mean, if you're thinking on the background of the continent of Europe, when you think that the Apostle Paul walked on the, on the stage of Europe, on the ground of Europe, building the kingdom of God, some of the first churches which were ever were planted were in Europe. And if you now then look at where we're at right now, then this is a really sad story, right? But let's not look into sad things. Let's look into Almighty God. And I just did a little research and, and realized that since 15 years, when the first Rema Bible Training Center was actually planted with on European ground, which was 15 years ago, we had two of them. It was in Italy and it was, was one in Germany. The year afterwards, followed by a few more nations. And, but I realized that within the 15 years, from two campuses, we actually grew to 28 right now. And from 44 students going like 15 years ago, we have over 900 students in class right now. And we are planning on actually cracking the thousand this year. Amen? And we're talking about laborers which are trained. We're talking about people getting ready to bring the gospel out. And I mean, we are gonna, you know, I mean, I, yes, I'm talking to you about Europe right now. And I know you might have different statistics within your within your country, within your nation. I know that some people are here from Brazil and I mean looking into how that has changed over the centuries. How Brazil and all the, the South, South American nations were like dark, dark. There was no gospel preached. And within a 30 years period of time, I mean look at what the kingdom of God has done, what the gospel has done. Amen? So and we are out there to make a difference. And it doesn't matter where you're at, we are out there to make a difference. And I want to talk to you about how significant you are in the plan of God. Are you ready for this? I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to start reading in verse uh, 7 and verse 8, Ephesians chapter 4. And I entitled my message really with scripture. I'm not good with titles. You know, some people are really, they're very gifted with some cool titles and they're using all these. That's not my thing, you know. No, 
I rather use cool outfits, but you know, the cool titles, that's not my thing. You know? <laughs> In Ephesians, <laughs> you need to have a good laugh at yourself. You know that, right? It's very important to stay sober. You know? In Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 7, in verse 8, we have some interesting scripture. And I mean, being a Bible teacher and training laborers and training ministers, it is my heart's desire to see the body of Christ grow to maturity. And Ephesians chapter 4 is the chapter about that in the Bible. Okay? I mean, if you probably would ask me, Monica, what is your most favorite scripture um, reference or chapter, I would probably say Ephesians chapter 4. I have studied greatly in that because I have found myself in it and I have found some key elements in there on how I can help others to find themselves in there and how to grow within to that. And you know, we all know John 14, you know that scripture in John 14 verse 12 where the Bible talks about that we should do greater works than Jesus, right? The same and greater works. I know my pastor of Rhema Bible Church in Bonn, he sits right over here. Where is, did he go? He just walks out. Thank you. <laughs> pastor Alex over here. He challenged us not too long ago and he says, have you ever raised somebody from the dead? And I have to say, no, I haven't yet. But I'm ready for it. Right? Aren't you ready for that? To do the same and greater works than the Lord did? Don't we want to see that? Yes, we could interpret it and say, yes, because we are so many, look at us. You know, there were the 12 disciples, there were the 70, and you know, and then the ones which followed, and they changed and turned the world upside down. But I mean, look at us, just this room full of people. What we could do and what we are already doing all over the world. But still, I am not satisfied with where we are at, because I still cannot say that I do even the fullness of the works of Jesus yet. I think I'm doing pretty good, getting closer. But as I told you, I haven't raised somebody from the dead yet. Hmm? I'm, I'm, I'm a person who challenges, okay? So be ready to be challenged this morning, yeah? I always tell the students, don't worry about if I step on your toes, okay? Don't worry about it. I sometimes ask my students in class, did you bring your shoes with the, with the metal capsule in front of it? You know, these, you know, so that, you, you know, I, I don't know, the cap, or whatever you call that, I don't know how you have, steel shoes, or what's the, steel? Ah, oh, steel toe, okay, so thank you, I learned something new. Okay, <laughs> so let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, and we want to talk about that every joint has to supply. Every joint has to supply. And in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 7, it says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto man. Have you ever seen that scripture? I love that scripture. Because it is not excluding anybody, but it is including everybody. It says everybody has received. Everybody. It doesn't mean a few special people, not the one which might have the fivefold ministry call, not the one which has the outgrowing and extroverted personalities, not the one who has a special, a special education, but everyone has received. Everyone. Which shows me that everybody is needed. Everybody is needed. And I mean, I'm thriving on this message. And as the Holy Spirit allowed me to teach you this morning about that, I was like, wow, glory, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right? Because I mean, that's, that's a, a, such an important thing to me that everybody understands that we have received something from God. He says here that everybody has received the measure of the gift of Christ. It's talking about a spiritual endowment, a supernatural ability from God, which you cannot have naturally. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about the fact that that is available to you now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. It's not something where you have to wait and pray long enough and fast for so that the Spirit might come upon you or your Spirit is, uh, feel a special anointing or where you have to come into a corporate assembly where we need to come together in order for you to have the possibility of receiving this. No. It's a part of you. Not because you are so great. Not because I am so great. But because the greater one lives on the inside of us. 
right? Wow. What would we do without him? Where would we be without him? And he is so good that he has actually entrusted to us everything which we need. Yes, for our general life, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about that we have received a supply by the Spirit of God from Christ, a supernatural endowment, an anointing, an ability, God, a God-given ability, which is not you, but it is Him in you, which enables you to do something within the kingdom of God. Woo! Everybody is needed. Everybody is needed. So to everyone it is given, not just the few elect. But then let's go down to verse 16. And we see actually a connection, if you really would look into that and read the rest of the uh, scripture here, you see a connection between verse 7 and 8 and verse 16. It's quite interesting. The wording is similar. The way it is approaching it is similar. We do know that from verse 11 on that we see the fivefold ministry officers are chosen. And then verse 12 on it's explaining the job of a spiritual leadership office, right? And in verse 16, it's still in this explanation, and it's talking about that the spiritual leaders are given so that we would be growing spiritually and maturing, so that you and I are capable of running our race, right? Isn't that what it's talking about? So then here in verse 16, I want you to see something. It says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. It's a mouthful of scripture. <laughs> I don't know about you, but as I read this the first time, I feel like, wow, I made a knot in my head. You should read this in German. You really make a knot in your head. <laughs> <laughs> German is like one third longer than English and has a very complicated grammar. I mean, I had to read this scripture over and over and over until I even understood slightly what it was talking about. <laughs> so then when you go to the Amplified Version, let me read that to you as well, okay? I I'm a woman, I like the Amplified Version, right? Mm -hmm. You know, women like to use a few more words, right? Mm -hmm. The explanation of, huh? okay? Let me read this. For because of him, the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied, when each part, with power adapted to its need, is working properly in all its function, grows to full maturity and building itself up in love. It's giving us here a picture of the body. Okay? From my natural profession, before I um, was allowed to step into the pulpit and become a minister of the word, I'm an x-ray technician. So I have a medical background. And I only did that education to please my parents who wanted me to be a good child and have a decent education before I would do the crazy thing behind the pulpit, okay? Because <laughs> at that time my parents weren't even born again. They just at my time of the education got born again, praise the Lord. Today they're on fire for the Lord. So... God is faithful. If we are faithful to him, he will save our families and get them into the kingdom. Don't ever give up, okay? That, that was for free. That's not my message. But. <laughs> and in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, don't turn there, just stay in Ephesians 4. You remember that it talks about the body of Christ, right? Right? The body of Christ. So what is the body of Christ about? Unity, coming together. In, in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, it says, For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, also, also is Christ. So we know that Christ is the head and we are the body. So when I read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, I have immediately that picture in front of my mind and in front of my eyes. Immediately. I see that picture. And as I told you, having a medical background, I have a little bit of better understanding on how this body functions wonderfully. It is a miracle in itself. You might not know that, but it has a, a, a self-healing system built in. This, that this body functions like it does is awesome. You can't even build machinery like that. For sure, we are created in His image and in His likeness, right? Amen? 
So he is wonderful. But that's what he's talking about. He's using an example here by which we can understand how God looks at things. And so I want to actually unpack Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 with you this morning. Is that all right? Yeah? Okay, let's look into some of these words. It talks about that we need to join, right? That we are joined and knit together. So the knitting word is kind of funny. It's kind of, you know, this knitting thing, you know, putting stuff together, doing some of these, how do you call that? Crafts, handiwork, this kind of, you know, what these women do, you know, which I never could learn. Okay. Oh my gosh. My grandmother was a professional tailor. My mom is a professional chef, kitchen cook, you know, uh, okay. And I have zero of any of that. <laughs> I can't even sew on a button that it stays on, okay? <laughs> really, absolutely. If you don't believe me, talk to my sister. <laughs> when she comes and visits me, I said, hey, could you help me, please? <laughs> I have zero of that. But I do understand how things are knitted together, right? How we need to come together, how it is knit together. It's like a garment put together. How, how, how material is woven together. That's what it's talking about. And when it's woven together in a right way, it is strong. It is difficult to rip this piece of material. Because it's knit together. It is woven together. And we have a similar wording when it talks about that we are joined together. If you look up that word in, in, in really in its meaning, it talks about that, that we are support one another in activities. When we are joined together, we are supporting each other in activities. We don't do things by ourselves. We, we, we become a member of something. Hmm? We become a member of something, become l uh, linked together or connected together. We are joined, right? That's what it's talking about. It's a similar uh, feeling of what I talked about, the knitting of putting together of the garment. It's this, we are coming together, we are joined together, we are becoming one and we are not being pulled apart from each other anymore. That's what it's talking about. You cannot separate it. Who is doing that? Christ. That's what it's talking about. He is doing it. We are connected. We become a member of the body of Christ. We are connected through Him. He is the head. We are the body. One. You might say, but I don't like that. I don't like that other person I'm connected to. Too bad for you. <laughs> it's not like in marriage where you choose your partner. No, that you have no choice. <laughs> so you better should turn to your neighbor and say, I really like you. <laughs> so much better, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> so much better. <laughs> because, you know, the Bible tells us that we should love each other. <laughs> Like you too, Pastor Alex. <laughs> it talks about that we should love each other, and that's a decision. But you know, I think it is helpful if we're liking each other as well. Very helpful. <laughs> but the beauty of God is that He has knit us together, that He has joined us together. He made us one so for a specific purpose, so that we could come together. Let's, let's keep something in Ephesians 4 because we're going to come back here. And let's look quickly together into Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. Amen. It's a very similar scripture here. <clears throat> and it says, and I'm reading from the Amplified uh, Bible again, women's version, I remember. So it says here, And not holding fast to the head, from whom the entire body, supplied and knit together by means of its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. Sounds just like Ephesians 4, 6, uh, 16, sorry, right? Sounds just like it. It talks about that it comes from the head, just like Ephesians 6, uh, 6, 4, 16, sorry. Numbers are not my strength, okay? It's kind of this thing, okay? <laughs> 
So it's talking about that it comes from the head and that he has, again, he has put the whole body together. He has knit us together. And it talks about that every joint and every ligament is going to give something. And so we are unpacking together, really, right now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. That's what we're doing, okay? I'm teaching you this morning. So really, my first point I was talking about, about was the joined and being knit together. So now I would like to talk to you a little bit on and going in about giving your supply. So let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. And it says here that every joint supplies. Okay, the word joint here means something here again, you know, like the joints where things are just coming together. It's an interesting picture. And, and it's not talking that stuff you would smoke, right, which we don't do as believers. Okay, <laughs> just to make sure. Okay, because when you look that word up, you get that definition as well. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, good. Wanting, just wanting to make sure. <laughs> it's talking about, again, the body. And I like that picture. And it's an interesting picture because it says that every joint is supplying. We always think that every part is supplying, but you don't have a joint if not two parts are coming together. Two parts need to come together in order for us that that supply is going to be released. Have you ever thought about that? Whoa, two parts at least have to come together to make up a joint. And usually it's actually more than one, just two parts. But I mean, I don't have an elbow working if I don't have these bones coming together, which are actually three. <laughs> then you have a capsule over there. There are ligaments and all this kind of stuff which makes up this joint. And if something is missing in there, we know that it will not function well. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that we are needing to give our supply, but for that each joint needs to be put together correctly and we need to be willing to release it. So I want to challenge us this morning. I know you would not be sitting here if you're not willing to give your supply. Who in the world would spend their money and their time right flying from all over the world in from within the nation taking all this effort of being in a conference like that if you're not willing to give your supply right you wouldn't do that so let me give you a big compliment thank you for doing this because i really believe that as we come together and we are joining together this week that it will give and release a supply for us as this body which is called rhema in a way that you have never seen it before. And I believe it will release something which you will take and bring to the places where God has placed you. And that's why I'm talking to you about this. Because we need to release the supply which each and every one of us has received. And we need to release the supply by us coming together, being joined together. Amen. Isn't that what we want to see? Isn't that where we need to go? I understand that I cannot do my job alone. I cannot fulfill the call God has placed within my life by myself. How could I? If I'm called to teach the word, I need to have somebody who hears it, right? <laughs> you, you understand? We are always, we are thinking often so isolated. We are thinking so often like, yeah, but what about me? And we are so much focused on ourselves. Instead of realizing that we need to come together and do it together. One of the reasons why I love what I'm doing is because I get to work with all these wonderful ministers all over in Europe and the world. <laughs> it's just awesome. Just to see, just when I talk about Europe alone, to see on how we as directors and the staff of the individual nations, how we are coming together and how these joints are knit together and how we're individually, all of us releasing the ability and what God has placed within us, the grace gifting, which we have read in verse 7 and verse 8, which you have received. We're releasing it. And as each of us releases it, Wow. And that's what we need. That's why everybody is needed. But Monica, you don't understand that. 
you know, I am just not important. I am not a great figure. I can't talk. I am just, you know, my education is not very good. I don't speak another language. You know, let me tell you, as a child, I was diagnosed with some learning disabilities. And my whole childhood, it was a struggle for me to go through school. And you know what they told me? That I should never learn a foreign language, and if I would, then don't ever learn English, you will not manage. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> don't ever believe the lies of the enemy. Don't ever believe the lies of the enemy. Don't ever believe the lies of the enemy. He's trying to keep you little. He's trying to tell you that you're not worth it. He's trying to remind you on your past where you have made mistakes. He is trying to show you all the failures. He's saying, hey, if you come out of that family, God can't use you. But remember who's talking to you. The one who wants to hinder you. It's not about your education. It's not about your background. It's not about your past. It's not about what you have accomplished or not. Right? Uh, it's not about all the titles you're carrying. And, and please, nothing is wrong with all these wonderful things. Education is good. Don't get me wrong. Don't then, on the other hand, don't think like, because I'm so well-educated, God can't use me either. Okay? That's not, that's not true either. Do not believe these lies. Do not. Be willing to give your supply. What does supply mean? Making something which is needed or wanted available to somebody else. Let me say that again. Supply means to make something which is needed or wanted available to somebody else. So with other words, I might carry it and you want it, so I better give it to you, otherwise you have no supply. That's why that picture which we're having that the joint is coming together is so beautiful. Because this one part needs it, the other one can supply it. With other words, we need each other. With other words, we are all needed, but we need each other, and we cannot do it without each other. Remember, we're liking each other. Hmm? <laughs> That's what it's talking about. That everybody gives their supply. It also talks about providing if we are supplying, we are providing. If we are supplying, we are giving something which is adequate to satisfy. Have you ever wanted to be satisfied in something? I mean, in our society, we're misusing it so much, this word, right? I want to be satisfied. But if we're looking at it from a biblical perspective, if we're looking at it on how God looks at that, that when we come together and we are releasing each individually our supply as we come together, as we are knit together, as we're interwoven with each other, what's going to happen is that each and every one of us becomes satisfied spiritually. Our needs will be met. Everything what you might need will be released. But that also includes that I need to be willing to release my part so that you can become satisfied and receive what you might need or want. Because it only works when the joint comes together. Right? If it is isolated, and that's what the enemy is always trying to do, he's trying to isolate us. Have you ever noticed? Right? They don't like me anymore. They hurt me. I got offended. Hmm? So I'm taking a step away from where I need to be connected. And the supply is not flowing anymore. And I get isolated. And then I wonder why nothing works in my life. And then I want to blame it on the ones which I isolated myself from. <laughs> which is totally strange. Because it has nothing to do with that group. It has everything to do with yourself separating yourself from. Let's make a decision today of saying this will never happen to me. 
I will never allow the enemy to isolate and separate me from the body of Christ. Never allow him to isolate and separate me from the part of the body where God has connected me to. I will not allow this because this is dangerous ground for myself. And not only that it is dangerous for myself, also then the rest of the body is missing something. Right? Because if I cannot give my supply, how would this joint work right if I'm missing a bone in here? Can't really work right. It might be still functioning some, but not the way it is created to do it. And that's why we need everybody in this. That is why it is so important that we have everybody. You know, I sometimes tell this not so funny story, but I think it is a very good story for this. As I worked as an x-ray technician right at the beginning, right after my education, I started in a hospital and I got this, this, the ambulance brought a young man in, the hand was all bundled up, you know, and, and, and blood was everywhere. <laughs> You know how beautiful that looks, okay? Those of you who have wonderful imaginations, if you're not used to that, don't faint on me right now, okay? <laughs> okay? So, so they said, please, would you quickly x-ray this hand? So, and you know, x-rays go through some of this bandage material, so I could put that hand right on the x-ray machine and x-ray it like that. So I pulled the picture out, looked into it, and said like, oh, he's missing his index finger. Not very nice. He was a young man, maybe, maybe 20, 21, 22 years old. Can't fully remember, but very young. He missed his index finger. I said, like, where's the index finger? And then the, the, it was a young baker. He had actually got his finger um, in one of the oven doors. You know, it was closed up and it was really... Okay, don't faint on me, remember? Okay. <laughs> so, so the baker said, like, you know, and he was totally in shock. He said to me, I think I have it in my other hand. <laughs> so I looked at it, and the doctors were very sharp, very quick. They took the index finger, I x-rayed it quickly, they put him into the operation room right away, they were able to fix it back on, and, and he now today has a perfect use of his finger again. <laughs> I love that picture. I love that example, because it shows me, see, where did he have this finger? In the other hand, right? Did it belong there? No. Was he suddenly to have six fingers on his hand? <laughs> no, not really. But it was a finger. Yeah, but it wasn't joined where it needed to be joined. It was in the wrong spot. As I put it individually on the machine and it was laying there as one finger, did it help him? It was still his finger, right? Was that finger of any use at that time? No. And to be honest, I mean, brutal again, sorry. If they could have not fixed it and it would have not happened fast enough, we would have to had to throw that finger in the garbage. Bug. <laughs> but that's not the meaning and that's not the usage for a finger. A finger is supposed to be connected where it's supposed to be connected on the right hand, right? At the right spot so that we have the full usage of it. And that's what it's talking about here in that scripture. That if we are coming together, if we are joined together, and then each and every one of us gives the supply. We are not trying to connect ourselves somewhere wrong. Don't try to connect yourself somewhere where you're not connected. Where you don't fit. Yeah, but I don't like where I'm connected. I want to do something different. Too bad for you. <laughs> right? Let's face it. Why are we making such a big fuss of it and saying, yeah, but I want to rather do this. Or I rather want to, you know, I mean, I rather want to move to Brazil where it's warm. In Germany, it's always gray and gray and raining. I don't want to be there. Lord, why are you not calling me to Hawaii? <laughs> right? <laughs> Hello, Hawaii brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and then you talk to people who live in one of these warm, wonderful, uh, warm nations and they said, I want to move to Switzerland, it's snow and I can go skiing, right? <laughs> and the Swiss people go, yeah. <laughs> you know, what, are we, what am I saying? We are always looking from natural perspective on some things and we're looking at it from an outward perspective and the grass always looks greener on the other side, but that's not the question. Let's be thankful that God has called us to give our supply where he has placed us. I might sometimes understand it. Sometimes it makes no sense to me. Sometimes 
I don't like it. Come on, aren't you a human being? <laughs> right? Hmm? So, so, but it, that's not the question. God has given us a supernatural endowment. He has equipped us supernaturally to give our supply at that place where he has placed us. And if he has done that, he has equipped you and he has equipped me to release something right into that joint where we are needed. And if we are releasing it within that joint, then we will be happy, we will be satisfied, and everybody around as well. Because the supply which we have is what those people I'm connected to will need. But if I'm trying to release my supply somewhere else, remember the finger in the wrong hand? <laughs> Detached. That finger couldn't give any supply. And still we as the body of Christ, we are fighting against that. We as individuals. Hmm? Because we always have this imagination that somewhere, somehow things are nicer. Somewhere, somehow um, I like these better. Or I would rather work with that person. Or it wouldn't it be nice like that. Hmm? You know, I mean, when I travel and I go to, this, to, to the different nations and I'm teaching the students. And I mean, sometimes the students say, oh, I would love to work with you, Monica. Don't talk to my staff. <laughs> Don't laugh too loud. <laughs> What am I saying? I'm a human being. You know, so, so sometimes when we meet somebody from the outward and somebody's coming in and giving their supply right in that moment, we think it is also wonderful. But when we get to know each other a little bit more, we have to make a decision that we like each other. Because the human side of us is coming out, right? Sorry. <laughs> Praise God when we get glorified. <laughs> I can hardly wait because I know my faults. And yes, do I leave them the way they are? No, I'm working on them with the help of the Spirit. No question about that. But I'm not perfect yet. I'm perfected in Christ just like you are as well. But we still live in the flesh. We still have a soul. We still have certain things which might not be so pleasant to those around us just because they are different. Hmm? Just because they're different. And to be different is actually a good thing. But we sometimes seem to fight that. You see that with couples. When they first get together, everything is wow. And they usually, you know, you're usually attracted to opposites, right? And so, so if, if one is the extrovert and the other one is the introverted, you think at the beginning, this is all wonderful. Isn't that glorious? It's so awesome. Oh, wow. And then after a few years, we have them sitting in our offices counseling them. <laughs> and really what it's all about is, why are they not like me? Because that's good. <laughs> you need that side. Mm. I have an easy talking about it. Okay, I'm not married, so it's easy for me to talk about that. <laughs> but I see it all the time. I see that all the time. It's everywhere like that. At the beginning, you start to work somewhere or with somebody and everything seemed to be glorious. And then after a while, when you get to know each other a little bit more in your weaknesses and in your human sides, then suddenly the glory is dwindling away a little bit. And then we have to come back to Ephesians chapter 4. I haven't gotten off my subject at all, okay? I'm still on my subject, okay? <laughs> then we are realizing in Ephesians chapter 4 that we have to come back to making a decision of saying, yes, I am joined right at this point. At this place, this is the place where God has called me to be. And it doesn't matter if I am the one who stays back with the stuff, right? Or if I am the one who goes out into the battlefield, we need both sides. And you remember that situation? I think we read that in Samuel. Um, I don't necessarily want to turn there right now. But you, you realize that some of them got a little weary. It was a, a difficult situation. And so David decided that some of the people would stay back with their stuff. And then that some of them would move out into the battle. And they won the battle. And as they came back from the battle, what happened there? You read this in 1 Samuel chapter 30. The ones which were fighting were saying, we don't want to share the spoil with the ones which stayed with the stuff. And what did David say? No way. They had just as much a part in it as you had. They just have a different function. 
and they are just as needed as you are. So then please, let's not try to compare ourselves with each other. The Bible calls this foolishness. But let's find out where is the endowment, the supply, the grace, serving grace, God's ability which has been entrusted to us. Where is the place where God has joined us together and let's release our supply in that place. Right? And stop this comparing thing. Because it will not bring us anywhere. Because this will diminish some of us and elevate others. But the only one which should be elevated is Jesus Christ. And nobody has the right to diminish themselves or anybody else just because they might be not the upfront person. Because they are just as anointed and just as needed. Every joint needs to give their supply and everybody is 100% needed because what you have received from God, the endowment which you have, I don't. That means I need you. And that's what I want to get to us. So let's, the result out of all of this, let's, let's finish this verse here. If you look into the results which is coming out of that, it's just amazing. It's talking about, and now I'm here, I have to find it in my notes again, sorry. <laughs> it's talking about here, make his increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In verse 16, the Amplified says, it grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. So if we are giving our supply, if we are joined together, if we are understanding what we have received from God and we are willing to release it, we will see some tremendous results. And the results will be the growth which we are all desiring to have. The growth of people receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The growth of strengthening the local churches. The growth of us spiritually, individually. We will see growth in any area of life. Because if every joint is connected and releases what God has placed supernaturally within them, that will mean we have everything what we need in order for us to fulfill what God wants us to do. And God is a God of growth. God is a God of, of he's, an, he's an enlarger. He's a builder. He's an innovator. Everything moves forward with him. Everything. He will never stop. He's never satisfied in that sense of saying, oh, I'm pleased now. Yes, he might be pleased with the individual result, but he wants always move forward because as long as there are people not saved on this earth, we cannot be satisfied with where we're at. Right? Amen? So let's do this. And, and we are sometimes asking, what is the key for revival? Monica, give me the key for revival. That's the key for revival. Because if everybody does that, we will reach this, this, this world, these people in all of our nations, in our continents, in the places where God has placed us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you will reach people, I cannot reach people. I will reach people, you cannot reach. And that's going to be the key to certain things. Because what we are seeing is that we will grow. We will grow. It talks about bodily growth. We will grow. I'm not talking about too much good food grow. Okay. Let's not go there, Monica, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. And it talks about that we will give each and every one. The result of if we do that is also that we will build each other up in love. We will build each other up in love. Isn't it all about love? Isn't that our foundation? Isn't that what, what is a key element for us? But we're often looking to our pastors, to our leaders, and says, you don't care enough about me. Nobody notices me. You're not lovely enough to me. You're not loving me enough. You're not paying enough attention to me. But it's not talking about that the spiritual leader, the pastor needs to do that. It talks about that as every joint gives their supply, we automatically will have that kind of growth happening. We will build each other up in love. And nobody will have any lack. It's a beautiful picture. And that shows us that we need each other. So really what we will have to discover here for ourselves is really just the question on where are we connected? And I have, I think this is pretty easy to answer that. Where are we connected? You're sitting where? At Rayma, right? It's very simple. God has connected us to this family. 
And I'm not just speaking to us here. I know that people are watching this. People will listen to this message. And we need to check our hearts. Because I really feel like some of us are slowly having the tendency of getting disconnected if I'm not getting something out of it. But what about me? Hmm? It's not about what I can get out of it. It's a question, what kind of supply can I give? Because if I give my supply and I am plugged in and I am functioning on the hand where God has placed me to, the others will release their supply and I will be built up in love. And I will grow. And that means everything what I need and what I need will be taken care of. But I'm not focusing on myself anymore. I'm capable of focusing away and being willing to give my supply because I'm starting to see you. Because I'm starting to look away from myself and realizing, wait a second, what can I do for you? How can I help you? What do you need? What do you want? How can we do this together? And as we all do that, we will grow together. We will grow together like this. We will grow numerically. We will grow spiritually. And we will build each other up in love. And then it's not about, but what about me anymore? No, not at all. Then we have the liberty of growing together. And God has joined us to this family. God has said, you are part of Rhema. I always tell our students, once Rhema, always Rhema. There's a mandate on this ministry, which we have to bring out there. I told you, 3.5% born again believers in Europe. Are you kidding me? We need to turn this around. And we will. Because we know that through the obedience of one man, we are where we are today. And through the obedience of all of us together and the willingness of releasing the supply, we are going to turn this world upside down for Christ. Right? So are we willing to give our supply? Okay, let's do this. Let's pray together. Let's get up and pray together. And I want you to make a commitment to the Lord. You talk to him yourself. And I want you to tell him that you're willing to give your supply. And if you got convicted by the Holy Ghost, that you have separated yourself a little bit, that you tried to detach your finger a little bit, or you maybe were actually holding it in the other hand, depending, okay? That you say, I'm going to be plucked back in. I'm going to give my supply. I might not understand it. I might not see it yet. I might still wonder about it. I'm not sure about it. Don't worry about it. God will make it clear to you. But the first step we have to do is our willingness to give our supply. Father, thank you that you have allowed us to give our supply. Thank you that you have brought us together as the Rhema family. And I come to you right now and I dedicate my life anew to you. And I say, I am willing to give my supply. I am willing to be joined and do what it takes, Father, to build your kingdom and come together and to fulfill the mandate which is upon Rhema. And I thank you for each and every one in this room, Father. I Thank you that you are moving on our hearts and that you are helping us to release the supernatural endowment which you have placed within each and every one of us so that we can build together what you have placed, that we can do together and bring the harvest in and bring the gospel out and to preach the message of faith all over this world, wherever you have placed us, wherever you are sending us, wherever you have connected us. And I thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. God bless Hallelujah. you guys. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can take that with you. Just take a, thank you, Monica. Praise God. All right. Okay. We're going to take another break. 1030. Get ready. All right. We'll come on and we'll worship God at 1030. Praise the Lord. <laughs>